If you are interested in LoRaWAN technology, you probably have heard of its competitor called Sigfox. Today we will compare the two. Which one is better? Greetings, YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent. With a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. To find out, we have to look at all levels, from the transceiver and the physical protocol via the firmware, the gateways and the network up to the application. And of course, we will do some tests. Viewers asked a few times for this comparison, but I always had to refuse it because we had no Sigfox coverage here in Switzerland. Since a few days, this has changed and I have coverage where I live. Now it is time for a closer look. I use the Arduino Maker Fox 1200 board for my first Sigfox tests and my old LoRaWAN tracker for the comparison with LoRaWAN. The first inspection shows that Arduino uses a Sigfox module on its board. Let's look at it. It has two chips on board, one from Atmel and one from Skyworks. And here is a simplified diagram. The ATA8520 is a specialized Sigfox chip with an RF front end, a modulator, a demodulator and a microcontroller including the Sigfox firmware. The Sky65378 is an RF switch which connects the receive and the transmit pin to one antenna. Also, it has a low noise amplifier to increase the sensitivity of the device. Interesting is the low power consumption of the Atmel chip in sleep mode. But before we continue the theory, I want to know if it works. First I go to the Sigfox back end on the internet, create an account and try to register my device. It wants an ID and a PAC number. I did not see any individual or handwritten numbers on or in the box. Maybe I have thrown it away with all the safety regulations. Fortunately, I find this small sketch which should solve my issue. With Sigfox, all numbers are already stored on the board. Cool. Now I can copy the two numbers into the backend and my device is registered to the network. Fast and easy. Next, I compile and upload the example sketch with the name firstconfiguration.ino. It looks like the blink sketch for Sigfox. Looking at the newest coverage map shows that my house is not covered yet. But because of my long distance experiments, I know the power of these LP van devices. This is why I go to our roof for my first tests. I have to enter a message into serial and hit enter. Nothing happens. And after about a minute, I get the disappointing message could not get any response from the server. Not exactly what I expected. So I took my car to drive into an area with coverage. But the same crap again. I was not amused and thought that they probably have problems with the network because it is still in experimental mode. I called my contact and he congratulated me for my first messages. I was baffled and we started our investigations and found out that the Arduino sketch waits for a downlink message. And as the default option, downlink messages are disabled in the backend. If you go to device and then click on ID, you get all the information about your device. If you go to the device type and click on the name, you see that no callback is available. You have to enable it if you want a response. Or do it like me, go to messages and see if you got mail, like Meg Ryan a few years ago. Watching this old trailer warmed my heart and I forgot all anger about the lousy documentation of the Arduino sketch. Now we know it works and we can continue in the warm lab. First question, what is the output power of this module? Let's connect it to the spectrum analyzer. 
Here we see that it sends three signals on three different frequencies, all about 12.5 dBm. This is a little lower than the 15 to 17 dBm of a LoRa module, but inside the specs of the chips. Second question, is the Arduino antenna any good? It depends. In free air, it is definitely for the US frequency range above 900 MHz. If you put it on the table, it's better. But still, it's not an ideal antenna. I hope Arduino's purchasing department at least got a reasonable price for this antenna. Next, let's have a look at the spectrum. The SDR receiver shows three short and very narrow band signals, one after the other, each on a different frequency. This is precisely what we expect from a Sigfox device. For the uplink, it uses phase shift keying or PSK with only 100 Hz bandwidth and transports 100 bits per second. But why three signals? I just sent one message. As we all know, Sigfox and LoRa both work in the 868 MHz ISM band and can even interfere with each other as we will later see. To reduce the effect of interference, we have two possibilities. Transfer the same information on several frequencies or transfer the same information at different times or both together. These methods are called frequency diversity or time diversity. And this is precisely what happens here. Sigfox transfers the same information three times and on different frequencies. The gateway tries to combine the three packets and find the best information. A third method, space diversity, would use two antennas at different locations to get a better signal. This method is not used here. The Sigfox module can use any frequency inside a 192 kHz band. There are no distinct channels defined. And PSK is an open and widely used modulation technology. Sigfox so-called link budget is around 155 dBm. This is very high and can only be reached by a very low transmission speed. This link budget more or less defines the reach of a particular signal. Let's now compare it with LoRaWAN. There is only one chip on this module, an SX1278 from Semtech or an RF96 from Hope. Both are the same. These chips also have an RF front end, a modulator and a demodulator, but no MCU and no firmware. From earlier videos, we know that these LoRa modules have an output power of 15 dBm. The SDR receiver shows an entirely different picture. A very short but extremely broadband signal. This is an SF7 signal, which is used in good conditions. An SF12 signal looks like that. It takes much longer and has the same bandwidth. And you can imagine that this signal is more resistant to interference. But it blocks a channel for a long time and consumes much more power. What happens if a LoRa and a Sigfox node are located in the same area and send a message at the same time? Here you see it. They interfere. But the Sigfox ground station would be able to use the first message and the LoRa gateway easily would be able to eliminate this very narrow band Sigfox signal. Both can detect the message. This is diversity technology at works. As we all know, LoRa gateways support eight channels and the nodes randomly select one channel for the transmission of each message. Its link budget is very similar to the one of Sigfox. So should be the range. You can watch my videos about the range of LoRa, including a world record attempt, if you are interested. The next topic is firmware. As we saw, the Sigfox module already has a firmware inside the chip. For LoRa, our Arduino or ESP has to execute all tasks. Fortunately, you get an Arduino library for LoRaWAN as well as for Sigfox. And as expected, the LoRaWAN library is bigger. 
because the transmission protocols are different, the gateways or ground stations are also different. LoRaWAN gateways all use the gateway chips from Semtech. And the Sigfox stations are SDR radios, similar to my HackRF I used before. LoRaWAN gateways monitor all eight channels in parallel. Sigfox ground stations monitor all frequencies in a range and do not need channels. Interestingly is the situation of openness. LoRaWAN uses proprietary chips on both sides and an open source firmware. And Sigfox uses an open transmission protocol, but proprietary firmware and private gateway hardware. Both are not really open source. If you have no Sigfox coverage, you usually can forget it. Maybe you can purchase a $500 Micronode gateway and place it where you need it. With LoRaWAN you can build and deploy your own gateway. You even can start with a $15 single channel LoRaWAN gateway. You find a video on how to build it on this channel. The next layer is the network. Here Sigfox has two different competitors. The Things Network or TTN with the community network and in a few countries operators which build their own LoRa network. Let's first compare it with TTN's community network. Both operate a seamless global network. TTN of course is free of charge and Sigfox charges for its service. Sigfox's biggest asset is its network and they place the ground stations for maximal coverage. TTN only connects gateways which are built by the community. This is why we have a lot of gateways in Amsterdam and Zurich, but none in many other places. TTN gateways are not professionally monitored and can be offline if the owner decides to do so. Sigfox offers a service level for the whole network. A few telco companies build a LoRaWAN in their countries. They offer a similar service to Sigfox. The only real difference is that Sigfox is a global company and the telcos operate in their countries. Maybe pricing and coverage are also different. If everything went okay, our message reaches the application layer. This area is not under the control of Sigfox or LoRaWAN. It is the user's turf. Both platforms offer services where we can get the messages either by our infrastructure or by cloud services. The allowed message volume of both platforms is minimal. LoRaWAN offers 25 to 730 uplink messages per day, depending on the speed. Sigfox offers 140 uplink messages. The numbers for downlink messages are 10, respective 4 messages per day. A small hint for LoRaWAN users. Here you can calculate the transmission time a message needs. The airtime of all messages in total must not exceed 30 seconds every 24 hours. Security is handled differently by both platforms. LoRaWAN is better in this respect if you need it. I link a video about Sigfox security if you are interested. Summarized, Sigfox and LoRaWAN use similar technologies. However, the transmission protocols are entirely different. Their performance is very similar. Sigfox is designed as a simple system for simple devices. LoRaWAN tries to be more sophisticated. It offers longer loads, default encryption, different spreading factors, eventually even software update over the air. LoRaWAN is a technology and Sigfox is a network. Both cannot be compared directly. Only TTN or national providers offer a network using the LoRaWAN technology and can be compared to Sigfox. Sigfox has one network in 60 countries consisting of strategically placed ground stations and network monitoring. No roaming is needed. National players like KPN or Swisscom also have strategically placed gateways and network monitoring, but only local coverage. TTN has global coverage,
but no strategically placed gateways and also no monitoring. Both Sigfox and LoRaWAN are European concepts. The coverage of other continents is small. TTN is the only community network without any subscription cost. Which one is better? For makers who are interested in low-power van technology, TTN is the right choice, especially if you have no Sigfox coverage. For all others, Sigfox or the national players are a good choice because they offer a service level. Here, coverage often will be the deciding factor. One more thing. We did not talk about a new killer technology, narrowband IoT, which is preferred by telecom operators because it is only an upgrade to their current infrastructure. Of course, as soon as I get coverage here in Switzerland, I will test it. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.